48 kills, Tarek GG, it's uh, What The Moose here and today I've got a bit of a different video for you guys. I've got loads of videos on tips and tricks and how to win ranked games but this video is actually about how to lose ranked games and I honestly believe that in order to climb the ladder you not only need to know how to win ranked games but you need to know how to lose them and how to move on from losses. It's a pretty common fact that everyone loses ranked games, everyone goes on lost streaks and I'm here to help you hopefully mitigate the damage from these lost streaks and move on relatively easy. So firstly I've got a little saying that I use quite a lot in solo queue and it should help you you know start to enjoy your losses a bit more or come to terms with them a bit more and that saying is this jungler can gank me 50 times, but it doesn't stop me from being good at the game. And you can apply the same thing to solo queue, and that is, you know, I can lose 50 games in a row, but it doesn't stop me from being a good player. And it's simply having faith in your skill and knowledge that, you know, even if you go on a lost streak, you'll get back to where you deserve to be. You know you're good at the game, your friends know you're good at the game, and regardless of you know getting ganked or losing a lot of games, you still are a good player and no one can take that away from you. You need to remember that skill isn't defined as your win-loss ratio and that solo queue isn't based on your skill. It's based on how well you can adapt and react to playing with four random players. So my second tip on how to lose ranked games is to play these games out regardless of if they're 100% over and try your best. Even if you already have AFKers, don't AFK, don't type in all chat and don't tell your friends about your team you've got or the game you just had. Keep playing the game out and try your best because honestly I learn the most about my champion and the game, especially when I lose lane and when we lose the game. You know, it's about having the strength to admit that your lane opponent was better than you. Anyone can say, oh yeah, you know, I lost top because I made a mistake. And that is incredibly arrogant and you will never learn that way. If you have the strength to say, you know, I may have made some mistakes, but I lost lane because this guy is genuinely better than me, then you can start to learn, you know, what did this guy do differently? What did this team do differently? Having the strength to admit that you know, perhaps there are better players than you out there is the first step you need to make to improving or you need to take to start improving. And that happens in games that are 100% lost, rather than uh, games that stomps and rather than games that you 100% win. Following on from this and trying to take something away from games that are 100% lost, you need to learn how to die. And learning how to die is just as important as learning how to not die. And in these types of games, it's the perfect kind of opportunity to learn how to do this. You need to learn how to die when you're in 1v2 lanes and you're 100% going to die. Perhaps it's a 3v1 dive or a 4v1 dive. You need to die getting farm, getting XP and pushing the lane out rather than dying under your tower with perhaps 3 or 4 waves there. You need to learn how to die correctly when perhaps most of your team is dead and you can delay slash stall for your team to get back to Nasha. You need to learn how to die when you're diving people, uh, who to trade deaths for, what CDs you're meant to trade before you die, what summoners you're meant to blow before you die. You need to learn when you're defending inhibs and defending towers, is it okay to trade your death for this inhib? What objectives are up? Which one of your teammates are close? If you die, are they going to be able to do anything out of that death? Or is it just going to be literally a death where it's a stalemate for 30 seconds or so? And again, you can use these 100% lost games to learn how to turtle. You might be on your Nexus Towers, 10k behind, 15 kills behind, but you can practice and see you know, what works efficiently for turtling, what really works well to stall out the game and prevent the enemy team or delay the enemy team from winning. And you can use these principles in ranked 5s, perhaps when you're behind, 
or apply these principles when you're in the opposite. When you're stomping a game in solo queue and it's 100% you're gonna win, you know what they're gonna try and you know how to counter those techniques from being in the position where you're so far behind. You know, you can practice getting wards and getting vision in your jungle and you can learn you know the safest routes to do this when you're so far behind you know what bushes not to face check these kinds of situations are perfect for learning how to close out games and how to turtle games you start to see the mistakes that people make when they're trying to push to win and how you can capitalize on those mistakes and equally, you start to notice the mistakes that people make when they're turtling and you learn how to not throw games in situations where you're really far ahead. The more you lose, the more experience you get and the better you get at closing out uh, and stalling in ranked games. And it all is great practice. These games where you're 100% losing, see them as practice. Don't view them as a waste and don't view them as uh, losing league points because that's not what they are. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of league points, but that's already happened. That's nothing you can change. What you can change is what you take away from the game. And, you know, you can take away a vast majority of things like we've already discussed. And one way to make sure you take something positive away from the game and making sure you continue to play with a smile on your face and are your optimum performance in your games to come is simply by setting yourself small goals that might be completely irrelevant in the grand scheme of things and will have no impact on the game but it prevents you from going afk it prevents you from typing and raging at your teammates or getting down about your own performance and these goals can be something as trivial as taking bot tower they might be pushing your tier 2 or tier 3 towers but your small goal that you've set yourself in this 100% loss game is taking your top tower. It might be shutting down the 10 and 0 vein and realistically like I said they'll probably have no impact on the outcome of the game but they definitely will have a massive impact on how you feel about the game and how you feel going into the games to come. So I've got a little analogy for you guys to explain something I talked about earlier and that's why solo queue is more about how you play reactively to your teammates rather than predictively to your teammates. And imagine I set you guys a challenge and that challenge is to all work together in the comment section and collectively post consecutive comments from number one to number 100. The only rules are each comment has to be a single number if you post the same number or someone posts the same number twice or makes a mistake, then you have to start again from one. So it has to be a clean chain of comments from one to 100 with everyone posting, you know, different comments. And you can imagine how chaotic this is gonna be. You know, someone might already be posting one or two, there might be four or five people post number three at the same time. And that's about people that deliberately try and ruin it by posting random numbers. And you know, you can see uh, similarities between this and solo queue. Random people working together, trying to predict what number someone's gonna uh, post or trying to predict what play someone's gonna make and try and help or try and move on from that rather than playing reactively, seeing what number someone posts and reacting to the play they make in solo queue, which is a lot more efficient. You can see that this challenge is almost impossible. You're working with however many people you've never met before and at first you know you're trying to get on everyone's trying their best but when it doesn't work you start to get angry start to blame each other and everyone starts to get frustrated obviously it gets a lot more easier if you can set up a skype call or some kind of communication with a leader taking charge everyone knows what they're doing everyone knows what to expect and everyone knows their job so no one does the same job everyone knows how they're going to move forward and what they have to do rather than trying to predict rather than hoping that someone posts one number or hoping that someone makes one play and having to play you know based on crossing your fingers and hoping for the best so basically remember it is solo queue and you shouldn't really expect anyone to do anything you should literally play reactively and be happy when they do what you would hope they do and if they don't, you wouldn't be in a position that compromises yourself. Moving on from this, you should really look at focusing on the positives from these losses, as few as they may be. 
A lot of people like to focus on the negatives and analyse them via replays after the game to see what they could have done better. However, I prefer to do this in real time, you know, analysing lane specifics, lane mechanics, analysing what your opponent does and analysing what you could have done better in real time on the moment because that's when it's freshest in your memory and that's when it's most likely to be you know easily recalled the next time it happens you know you remember you know I made this mistake before I'm not gonna make this mistake again and by focusing the positives of a loss after the game you go into the next game with a really strong mindset and the potential to play the best you possibly can Remember, at the end of the day, it is solo queue, and you could be playing amazing and have a really poor team, and there's nothing you can do, and you're gonna lose. And equally, you could be playing really, really poorly, and have a really good team, and you'll win, and there's nothing the enemy can do. That's just how solo queue works, and that's just how, you know, the roll of the dice works. My final tip on how to lose ranked games is something that's, you know, fairly commonly said, but often not applied and that is after you lose two ranked games in a row take a break get out you know get some fresh air do some exercise get something to eat have a chat to someone in real life one of your mates one of your family members and just clear your mind for a bit it's so easy to press the play button again but it's really weak to press the play button again having the strength to say I've lost two games, I really want to get my league points back, but I'm going to clear my mind before I press, press the play button again. That's where the real strength comes from, and that's where, you know, people who are going to get high and people who are going to stay low get separated. Now obviously a lot of this video has been focused around games that are 100% lost. I really don't want you guys to adopt the mindset that, you know, all games are 100% lost and all solo good games are unrecoverable. Because honestly, the type of games I'm talking about are very few and far between in solo queue. But it's so, so important to know how to lose in those circumstances and how to play out those circumstances rather than wasting your time. It's so easy to come back from games in solo queue, but you know, it's really important to know how to lose if the loss is inevitable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a comment, let me know what you think, like, favourite and tell your friends, uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter for more updates and please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I'll see you guys next time, peace.